Hi, Cenk Uygur of the Young Turks here. I'm here with Dina Tekruri from AJ+. Plus. Uh, Dina, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about AJ+, Plus and what you guys are up to. So AJ Plus is the all digital video news channel of Al Jazeera Network. It's the latest channel to launch. We um, exist online, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we also have an app, and, um, a new version of which we're unveiling here at South by Southwest. It's basically a channel for millennials, and we cover everything from hard news, international affairs, to pop cultures, to the conversations happening in the social sphere. All right, you got a new app coming up. What is this? Okay, that sounds fun. Yeah. So uh, tell me more about the content and the topics that you guys cover. Sure. So um, the way we approach things, we have basically three different strands um, within the channel. We have our short uh, real time, which are basically 30 second to one minute bite sized news packages um, that can be about anything. Like I said, it could be about, you know, the latest news. Like I think they're doing something about the dirty brigades, the, the Iraqi army today, mm -hmm. um, even though I'm not there. That's what I believe they're covering. Or it could be, you know, lighter stories, featurey type things. But the point is they do them very quickly, um, very fast moving, just uh, text on screen and and pictures and music, and oftentimes they'll incorporate uh, tweets, you know, giving mm. people a voice through these short pieces. We oh, stop there for a second. Right. Uh, I am Turkish American, so I love meze. So I like bite-sized everything. That's 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 <laughs> our channel basically, bite-sized. We know we're in the online space. We're know we're, we know we're competing um, for people's attention spans, and so mm. we like to give things with a lot of context and content, but in a short way that'll give people you know a good idea of what's going on out there. Yeah, my problem is I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> and really? Didn't notice. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, but uh, but I like to be able to get in, get out, uh, depending on like dirty brigades is a super interesting topic. Uh, and to be able to at least get a good understanding of what that is, that yeah. makes a ton of sense. What else do you guys cover? So then you move up to sort of our, sort of our longer type stuff. Um, I work on a team that we call Context, and our mission is to sort of contextualize what's going on out there. We do this I got that instantly once you said Context. Right? I was like, I, I know what this is about. Yeah. I know it. All right, uh, sorry, it's important. Ahead. So the, bre <laughs> the bread and butter of Context, and what you'll see me doing oftentimes on camera, is like a two to three minute explainer on what's going on. I'll give you an example. Um, when the war, the Israel's war, on Gaza started in the summer, we came out with you know at least one or two videos a week contextualizing what's happening because that's often so missing from the narrative out there, especially when it comes to U.S. mainstream news. And we saw those videos do remarkably well because, especially when it comes to Israel and Palestine, that is what's so often missing. So we're not just talking about you know two equal sides that are firing rockets and you know missiles at one another. No, this actually goes to a larger problem. You're talking about a population, the most densely populated place in the world, which is the Gaza. A strip um, that are blockaded by Israel from air, land, and sea, and uh, you know, so we, we, we include things like that, um, and it seems to resonate well. Well, that gives you a good competitive advantage because most of the rest of the media, it gives you a very clear perspective on an issue like Israel and Palestine. Israel's right. It doesn't matter if they have a left-wing government. It doesn't have, matter if they have a right-wing government. It doesn't matter if they have a moderate government. They're always right, right? That's not really the context that helps you figure out the news. Sure. So when you figure out, hey, wait a minute now, when Netanyahu says, uh, well, we give them warning so they could just leave, the context of really where could they leave to is pretty important. Absolutely. <laughs> right? And when you realize, oh, it's actually just the giant uh, open air prison, they actually can't leave. That's the whole point of being occupied, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you go, oh, that's interesting context. So I. Okay, two for two, I like that too. Yeah, <laughs> and what I will say this time, I mean, and the war was horrific, obviously, and there's still so many flaws when it comes to mainstream media, but what we saw this time, I think, more than before is that alternative media and social media help to keep the mainstream media accountable. Because mm -hmm. we, we, and you know, people on Twitter, people on the ground, whatever, call them out on their bullshit, and I think it's, it's, it's helping to Damn. sort of change the narrative. Yeah, and a great example of that was when uh, the NBC uh, reporter on the scene reported the four kids being killed on the beach and uh, and then they pulled them. Right. And, and they then put in Richard Engel instead. That's right. And now I actually, Richard Engel, I know him a, a little bit from when I was at NBC. He's actually maybe the best reporter they have and, and a pretty good uh, war correspondent. Um, so no diss on Richard Engel. But the guy down there uh, was doing a great job and they pulled him for no reason. It seemed like pretty much because he actually delivered the news of those four kids being killed. But it was the firestorm on social media that, like, I think NBC stopped in their tracks. They're like, oh, crap, we have a crisis on our hands. And that was because of 
Absolutely. You know? And one of the stories we did at the time, too, was sort of this, um, a glimpse at how when it comes to Israel and Palestine, the media itself becomes a story. And the case of Ayman Mohideen, who you're talking about, we looked at as well. Yeah, and, and yeah, and when there was a, a firestorm online, NBC was like, yeah, no. No, he's just taking a little break. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah we we're going to put him back in anyway. Right, <laughs> so right. that's great. That's the power of new media. Whether it's us doing it, you guys doing it. Uh, anything else uh, topic-wise? you got context. you got the bite-sized stuff. Then we have stories, which are basically short docs and features. They come from all over the world, um, and it's some really powerful stuff. They're some of our best-performing uh, content at AJ+. And are those longer? They're longer. They can range from like 7 to 13 minutes. Sometimes they're in multiple parts. Okay, great. And do you yourself mainly work in context or do you work across all No, I mainly work in context, but within context we do the um, explainers like I just uh, explained mm. to you. She's doing her job right now as we speak. There she's giving go. me context, she's explaining things. Yeah, okay. we, we also do some, you know, I do interviews and I also okay. more so now than ever we're going out and we're doing stuff in the field as well, which I love doing. So when you see a news story that you go, Man, do I need to explain that to folks? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we're like, what is our, what can our contribution be here? What do the people need to know? You know, how can we contextualize it for them, or what's an interesting angle we can uh, cover it? Like, for example, we did a lot of stuff on police brutality, and we continue to do so. We sent a team to Ferguson. They went there and they filmed with their iPhones, really just like raw, like quick turnaround stuff. But we also did explainers about police brutality in studio. We did a lot of the real time, shorter, you know, bite sized things I was telling you about. Um, we also did, um, you know, I did actually something where, you know, we did, for example, an explainer we would do is when is it okay for police to actually shoot someone in the United States? And we did a lot of That's research great. and stuff, found out the answer is pretty darn subjective. That explainer's out there. What we followed that up with was I went with my uh, team to the Richmond Police Department in California, which actually has a pretty solid record um, when it comes to police involved shootings. They're, they're a pretty good police force. But what they did was they put me in the shoes of a cop for a day mm -hmm. and they put me in a training and they equipped me with a belt and I had a gun and I had a Did taser. Did you tase anybody? I, I didn't tase anyone. I, I, on principle, I wasn't, try, I wasn't trying to shoot anyone, Jake. <laughs> okay, but no, they no. put me in these scenarios where I had to decide in a quick second what kind of force should I use and when? And I got shot in one of the scenarios. Like the guy, the, he was a cop role playing, uh -huh. but he shot me. It was, you know, I was going up to him and I had to pull him over to give him a ticket because he ran a red light or something. The minute I got out of the car, he gets out, bam, 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 I'm dead. And so yeah. you, know, you know what they're doing with that. They're trying yeah. to say, look how fast we have to think, look how whatever, but it was interesting and it was, you know. So I, I'm gonna say two things over that. Yeah. Uh, one, I, I actually did a ride along with cops when I, went, when I was in law school. And I was I worked at a prosecutor's office, uh, so you know I, you know I'm on their side. Uh, we're going to catch the bad guys. I rode along with them all night long in Brooklyn, and uh, I mean we were lucky. There was no terrible thing that happened that night. There are things that go down. And that's why we need cops. Uh, but mainly they just drove around incredibly recklessly all night long, <laughs> ran every red light, speeded, show me uh, where all the Russian mafia guys live. Right. Okay, so it depends, but m the reason I bring that up is because it depends on your context, to your early point, and, and, uh, and what they do with the training. The story you tell me actually makes me more worried about the cops because it is incredibly rare that somebody will jump out of their car and bang, 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 shoot well, the cops. I was, I was incensed after that happened. And I was like, you're, te you're teaching your cops to shoot then to assume everyone's a suspect. That's right. I got really emotional. And they're like, right. you know, he's like, we have, t the cop was like, we have tons of dash cam footage that says, shows this actually happens a lot. And I said, no, no it doesn't. Because me it as a cop. It happens rarely. It happens rarely. And the next time I'm going to pull someone over, guess what? I'm going to reach for my gun. That's what you're training me to think. That's right. Uh, so there were problems with that. But I will say that there was... It was eye-opening in a sense to have mm. to be in that position and, and to have to make a split second and to think about defending your life, which gave me a little more sympathy for them, but, mm. but with all the problems that you just laid out. Yeah, I, look, I, I think that that, I've been saying all along, the problem is the training, the problem is the training. They train them to be paranoid, not to take 1% risk with their lives, but what they're doing is they're also saying, I'm willing to take a far greater percentage risk with your life. So what happens very rarely is somebody jumps out of their car, boom, 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 shoots all the cops. So yes, it happens, but it's super rare. Sure. What happens a lot more often is a cop is worried they're gonna jump out and shoot, so they shoot the guy within two seconds. Yeah. So, but you see, going in depth, doing that investigation, and doing that reporting gives you wonderful context. So there's, there's a lot to be gained from it. Thanks. Dina from AJ Plus, thanks for joining us, appreciate it.